All right, I just finished uh, putting the bolts in the last of the linear carriages, the last two here. So I got four bolts on either side, and again, I used the uh, blue thread locking compound. Also, I just wanted to let you know where I did it as far as orientation on the plate. There are five possible mounting holes, two you can't see underneath there. Uh, the top one I did not use. So I got it. the bolts in the four bottom mounting holes. The top one, I guess, would be used if there was a uh, wider piece of steel used across the gantry. Also this right here is the anti-backlash nut that is used to uh, control the lead screw. That's where the lead screw spins in and out of that allowing it to raise up and down while not introducing slop into the system. So that's it for now. I'll put the rest of it together and then get the video again. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and explain this entire part a little bit more. So i got to take it apart anyways and reassemble it using the thread locking compound. but. There's quite a few little parts in here, so I'll, I'll break it apart and put it back together and show you. Alright, so as you can see, these are all the pieces that were on the lead screw. And I'll go through and show you them up closely and tell you how to get it all assembled. Uh, first thing I want to tell you about, though, is the actual lead screw itself. Uh, the one that I'm using is a 5 start. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that at least one of the ends on there has been filed down so that you can screw it into that um, anti-backlash nut. If not, you'll ruin the threads. So uh, that's that. Let me explain how this all works. Okay, first part that's going to go on is going to be this coupler. And uh, this coupler has a little bit of flex in it. You can see all this stuff that's cut into this piece of aluminum that allows it to basically be a shock absorber and to connect this half inch rod with the quarter inch shaft of the motor itself. So. The way that this coupler works is you have a there's a little bit of a bottom that's machined into this. And this is the first part that goes on, and you fit it on there until it goes on the bottom, and then go ahead and tighten it down with this set screw here. And on the other side, there's another set screw, and that basically works as a lock that presses really tight against the actual thread itself so that it can't twist out of that. Next up, which butts right against that. You have a washer, a thrust bearing, and another washer. And that just goes together as a sandwich. And this is what allows this to spin freely as it butts up against this bearing block. The bearing block is basically what it's called. It's a block that has a bearing in it. And this block attaches to the actual upright assembly that's holding the router itself and allows this to spin freely through it, but keep everything from being able to move around. So the bearing block came with this bearing pressed in here very tightly. These screws are just what allows it to attach to the upright. And this is the retaining plate. You can see there's a little bit of a, a machined recess in here that actually flips over and lays on top of the bearing because of this small raised portion of the bearing. And this is going to get bolted back down with the, the Loctite. So that's going to go like that. You're going to have this set of assemblies which butts up against it. Everything goes tight. Then again, we got to be able to separate motion from the next piece. So we're going to have the same assembly we had last time, a washer, thrust bearing, another washer. That goes together as a sandwich, butts up against to the other side of the blurring box, or bearing block, which is installed like that. And then lastly is this piece, which is just a retaining nut, so to speak. And uh, it's very heavy duty. It feels like a piece of steel this time. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that screwed in as well. So. That's how all that works and gets held together, and that's what allows the motion to work with the lead screw. All right, so here it is all put back together. You can see the coupler, the sandwich with the thrust bearing in the middle, the bearing block, another sandwich, and then another coupler on the end to lock everything into place. Now it's very important that when all this goes together, I started with this, cranked everything down, used the thread locking compound, then when I reassembled all this stuff, I used a lot of pressure from my thumb to push this as hard as I could against this. I wanted this as tight as a sandwich as I could before I started locking that down. It's one area where you got you want absolutely no play. This thing should be able to spin perfectly freely. That's due to having the thrust bearings on either side, but you do not want any slop in this whatsoever. Alright, wrapping this up. Alright, last part of this is I've got the motor mount plate and I got it, you know, not completely tightened down. I haven't put any thread locking compound on it yet because we got to get this adjusted. I left this bearing block loose here because we need to see how 
high we have to go in order to seat that the motor shaft which hangs off the bottom here into there. I want to go as deep as possible so I can get a really nice tight bite. You'll notice that on this motor there's this is a stand the standard and there's a bit of a lip. On top of this motor mount we have a perfectly machined hole that when this goes in there it sits in there nice and tight, a really tight fit. So I'm going to go ahead and get that pressed in real quick and I'll come back. Alright, now that I have that motor seated on there, you kind of see how this is all starting to come together. The motor has four mounting locations and um, it's basically just a drilled out hole. It doesn't have any threads in it, but the motor mounting block does. So using uh, cap head screws, socket head cap screws, um, and we're basically going to screw that down into the plate nice and tight with, again with thread locking compound. But before I go ahead and finalize everything, what we're really after at this point in time is seeing exactly how high we have to go up so that we can get that seated down in there as deep as possible and all locked in. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with this, but basically you can see I'm just screwing it now up into position and uh, we can go ahead and get everything finalized from here. So that's essentially how it all comes together at this point in time and remember definitely be using the locking compound on this all the torque from this entire motor is going to be distributed through this coupler which puts it on this shaft so this is very important that this gets tightened down as securely as possible and two things that I forgot to mention this isn't completely tight this motor plate right here so I can still move it a little bit because I want to be able to align this you know shaft right down in the center of this hole and obviously once this gets into place you have to tighten this down too again thread locking compound so there you have it that is the completed Z axis now there was one thing that I forgot to mention um, this motor has two shafts you don't need to have a motor with two shafts uh, what this can be useful for is to put a a hand wheel up at the top so manually if you would ever get in trouble you could raise and lower this thing much quickly than trying to use your fingers um, and also the shaft underneath here that goes into the coupler has a flat ground side obviously that's the side that needs to go against the set screw so that's about it and uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to something else now